This is Pakistan and this is Iran. And this is a disaster waiting to happen. Have you ever wondered what this thing is? Is it a subduction zone or is it just a regular transition zone between continental and oceanic crust? Well, it turns out this is actually a subduction zone called the Makran Trench, and it has a history of producing deadly earthquakes that most people have never heard about. However, I'm going to change that, and today I'm going to explain about how this subduction zone works, what are its risks and its future sort of risk of making a catastrophic scenario that would probably ruin the days of uh, tens of thousands of people. Let's start with discussing the plate tectonics. Here we have Turkey, the Caucasus, and Iran. And here the Arabian plate crashes into the Eurasian plate in a sort of continent to continent collision zone. This also explains why this area is so mountainous and is also why this area is a disaster waiting to happen. So that's for a future video. However, if we move south, you will see the Makran Trench as shown earlier. Here, instead of crashing on directly, the Arabian plate sort of subducts beneath the Eurasian plate in a typical subduction zone manner. This is also proven by the existence of volcanoes in the region. This is definitely a new fact for many people that there are volcanoes in Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Also, these volcanoes are located quite far from the trench, or what would be the trench if it wasn't covered by 7 kilometer thick layer of sediment. But yes, the volcanoes are located around 400 kilometers from the would-be trench, which is quite far because in most places it's around 200 to 300 kilometers. And I have a suspicious feeling that this may be caused by the shallow angle of subduction being less than 30 degrees. However, moving on, because this is Shindo 7, not Volcanic Explosivity Index 8. Historically, the eastern side has been more active than the western side. The eastern side has had three major earthquakes in recent history. Well, not so recent history, but still, one in 1765, one in 1851, and one in 1945. The last one of which was recent enough that it was actually detected by modern seismometers. The western side, however, hasn't been all that active. It had one quake in 1008 and one quake in 1483, the latter of which was so mysterious that scientists are still debating whether this earthquake was caused by a trench itself or by another fault. However, do not be fooled by the lack of seismicity. In fact, we should be more worried since the lack of seismicity often means that strain is building up and it could all unleash in a future quake that would probably ruin the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Within the direct firing zone of the Makran Trench, we have Karachi, which is a city of 14 million people, Gwadar, a small city but with some quite expensive port facilities, Chabahar, a city of 100,000 people, and Muscat, a city of over 1 million people. What's more concerning, however, is the city of bandar e jask in Iran. This city looks like it's been surrounded on two sides by water and on one side by very flat land. Let's hope this city has some moderately tall buildings to evacuate to. The worst case scenario based on the paper seems to be a magnitude 9.1 earthquake on the western side of the Makran subduction zone. While there is no mention on the severity of ground motion in this particular scenario, we can infer that it will be absolutely horrendous because even the magnitude 8 1945 Balochistan earthquake was able to produce Mercalli intensity 10. Not to mention, that the scenario shows that there could be over 30 meters of fault displacement in the part of the fault that is quite close to land. That 30 meters of displacement will also be responsible for producing the massive tsunami that will absolutely wreck cities and coastal communities along the coastlines of Iran, Pakistan, and Oman. One particularly nasty simulation shows that there could be 25 meter high waves in the port of Chabahar. There are also two other factors that can be responsible for making a large tsunami. The first, of course, is underwater landslides, because even shallow underwater slopes of just over 3 degrees can, can sort of slide and that would cause a tsunami. In fact, this has happened before. The 2013 Balochistan earthquake actually caused a tsunami of around half a meter of height, despite its epicenter being located deep inland. The second factor is splay faulting. In a nutshell, splay faulting is when you have a fault rupture one continues towards the trench because it is a subduction zone earthquake and one shoots up directly into the surface causing massive amounts of vertical uplift which is of course very good for tsunami generation. Quick update, I found the paper that explains about the magnitude 9.2 scenario. So everything I've just said before is a 9.1. The 9.2 scenario is that, but everything also happens in the eastern side of the trench and Karachi will be exposed to whatever I just said just now. So the simulation will be 
based on the 9.2 scenario because that's the worst case scenario. Also, up to this point, I haven't found any ground motion information. So, while the tsunami will be based on the paper, the ground motion will be based on my guess, which is based on past earthquakes and a bit of artistic license.
So, how do we save lives? Now, I could get into the obvious, such as education and strengthening building codes, but I want to point out a less obvious thing, and that is an earthquake early warning system. Because we might think that those two countries, Iran and Pakistan, forgive me for saying this, they're not the wealthiest countries, so how can they afford such a thing? But Mexico can do it in the 90s. In fact, I believe they're actually the first country to do it, not Japan. So if Mexico can install an earthquake early warning system for their capital and several other large cities, then so can Iran and so can Pakistan. Especially because this is a megatrust earthquake. So if you're far away from the epicenter, you can get probably over a minute of warning, which is not just enough to drop carbon hold on, it's enough to run outside. But anyway, thanks for watching.